So here's an expression dividing another expression. The one on top is known as a cubic polynomial, and the divisor is a linear factor of x minus 1. Most students learn to divide these off using long division, but that's a really long, outdated way of doing maths. Here's a much quicker way. This is known as synthetic division. Many teachers will say this technique, while incredibly fast, is limited to simple problems. They are right, but not entirely. I'll talk a little more about this at the end of the video, but for now, let's learn how this works so you can start dividing things quickly. Good day, guys. This is the math base. So to start you off, the first thing you do is draw an upside down division bracket. Make sure it's deep enough to fit two rows of numbers. Now put a zero in the corner. In every question, this will always be a zero. Next, pluck out the coefficients from the cubic and write them in the top row as 2, negative 5, 1, and negative 3. Now, our divisor is x plus 1, right? The opposite of the number here is negative 1. Write this outside the second line. Then, isolate the last number. The second row will have products, while the third row will have sums. Starting from the left, add 2 with 0 and write the sum below. Next, times this sum with negative 1 and place the product inside. Now add negative 5 with negative 2, writing the sum below. Then multiply negative 7 with negative 1 again. That product goes to the next available spot in the second row. Repeat this alternating process until you reach the end. Whenever we do a division, it usually gives us a quotient and a remainder. Here, 2, negative 7, and 8 are coefficients of the quotient, while negative 11 is the remainder. The quotient is usually a cubic or a quadratic. To figure out which one it is, take the highest power from your numerator and divide the highest power from the denominator. This leaves us with x squared. So we need to write a quadratic expression, meaning it's 2x squared minus 7x plus 8, and we minus 11 over the original divisor to complete our answer. But how do we know this is correct? We can find out by subbing negative 1 into the cubic. Doing so gives us negative 11. This is our remainder from the division. And it's not a coincidence that this value is down here as well. When they match, there's a really good chance that you did this correctly. It's pretty tough to get this right by accident. Here's a slightly different problem you can work on. Feel free to pause the video if you want to give it a go on your own first. Otherwise, we begin by setting up the bracket and the zero, followed by the coefficients. But be careful with this step. A cubic is supposed to have four terms, but we only see three here. That's because the x squared term is missing. This is what the polynomial is supposed to look like. And that's what we need to write in the division bracket. So isolate the last number and now take the opposite of our divisor's number as positive two. Place this outside. From here, we alternate addition and multiplication. Once you have the result, check it by subbing positive 2 in the cubic. It gave us negative 20, which matches our remainder, so it's all good. Our cubic is dividing a linear factor, so the quotient will be a quadratic again. So our final answer is a quadratic minus the remainder over x minus 2. I know this is a bit of a process to go through, but all it takes is about five questions for you to get really good at this. Plus, they're very quick compared to long division. So why don't more teachers cover this in class? It's because synthetic division has limitations. Most of the time, you'll be dividing polynomials by these sorts of factors. And what they have in common is the x has a coefficient of positive 1. Trouble is, as soon as we start dividing things like 2x plus 3 or negative x plus 1, synthetic division breaks down. In other words, it only works when x has nothing in front of it. And the fix is pretty easy. You just need to factorize the divisor first. It'll create some fractions, but long division would still be a nightmare in comparison. Another special case is when polynomials divide quadratic factors. In my opinion, I think long division is okay for this, but what most teachers don't realize is that synthetic division can do it as well. I will readily admit it's not as straightforward as what we covered in this video, but that's a story for another day.
So if you guys enjoyed the video or found it helpful, please leave a like and let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I upload videos every Friday, so subscribe and ring the bell to stay in touch. Thanks guys, see you next time!